Have you just bought a 7, 8 or 9000 series AM5 CPU? If you have, you may be on the perfect hunt for the next affordable and compatible motherboard. Well today we're checking out the Asus TUF B850-E Wi-Fi motherboard. We're going to unbox it, we're going to show you what you get in the box, we're going to run through all of the connections and we're going to talk about the pros and cons on this particular board. Then we're going to pose the question, should this motherboard be on your list or should you give it a miss? Let's check it out. Before we actually get into that, I think it's quite important that people understand the actual chipsets themselves that's compatible with AM5. And there's a whole magnitude of different ones to comprehend, guys. And that's why it's so bloody, shall we say, confusing to first-time builders. And also, mate, you never know which one to get, depending on what you're wanting to do. So, with that being said, there is A620. It's more of an entry-level chipset. It's more budget-friendly, but it's less feature-rich, okay? But it's much more affordable as well. We then go to the likes of B650 and B650E, of which we had some fantastic feature-rich boards a couple of uh, years ago when they got released with the 7000 series CPUs. So you get Gen 5 support, you also get a USB 20 gig, you got Wi-Fi 6E, and so on and so forth. A little bit more expensive, but catered for a humongous range of different users. You then moved on to more of the high-end and enthusiastic builds, or enthusiast builds, uh, which are X670 and X670E. That bought in things such as additional M.2s, maybe Wi-Fi 7, um, USB 4, more M.2 slots, and more PCIe lanes as well. We then have had this generation, which is B850 and B850E, and in my opinion, is the absolute sweet spot for price versus performance. And in 95% of cases, most people don't actually need any more than a B850E, unless you've got an unusual use case or a specific use case in itself. The last but not least is X870 and X870E. Again, a little bit like the difference between B650 and X670. It's got all of the latest features, more connectivity, perhaps more connections for fan and RGB control, NVMEs and SSDs, etc. etc. But one of the low points of that is you're paying much, much more for it. And nine out of ten times, you don't actually need it. That's where the Asus Tough B850E Wi-Fi comes into play. It's affordable offers lots of great connectivity, including Gen 5 support, along with lots of RGB and system fan headers. This should cater for around 90% of all use cases. With that being said, let's check it out. So opening it up, over here we have located our wireless aerial. This is also magnetic, it folds up really nicely, guys. I'll just give you a quick look at this. I like this one because this literally folds out and then it locks into place and then there's a magnet on the bottom which will hold that nicely in place. And the other really nice thing about this is on this side, they've also got the quick connects. So no more screwing them in. They literally just push on. Taking our motherboard out, popping that to one side. We don't get much in here in all honesty. We get a couple of SATA data cables. We get three little packs. One is an M.2 screw. We get an M.2 rubber to change the height of our M.2. And then we also get a standoff as well for our M.2. We get a safety instruction, quick installation guide, and we also get a few stickers. Let's check out our motherboard. I always think with the actual Tough series, they do put a lot of effort into uh, making them quite aesthetic. Everything's blacked out. You've got the nice silver Tough 
gaming logo which is there. It's nice to see that some of the yellow has disappeared. It's a little bit here but obviously that pops out no problems at all but generally a really nice looking board. So what we're going to do guys is I just want to have a run around this board point out some of the, the actual connectors that 90% of people will actually need, point out some of the pros on this particular board so that if this ticks all of the concerns that you have and this board has it, well, it might just help you make up your mind whether this board's gonna be right for you. One of the first things that really stands out on this board is the humongous heat sinks across our VRMs, chokes, and MOSFETs down here. It's quite a nice design, quite blacked out, and in keeping with the rest of the silver on the particular board. The other thing to note here is we've also got an eight plus four pin for our EPS connectors. Differs slightly from two eight pins, and it's important to note that this board has actually got an eight plus two plus one power delivery. So not, I would say, the best power delivery, but I do want to point out this board will support any 7, 8 or 9000 series CPUs right from a 7600 right through to a 9950X3D. In my opinion, I would pair anything with this particular board right up to something like a 9800X3D. I think you shouldn't have any issues with an 8 core 16 threaded CPU. If you do want to do a light uh, overclock, should have no issues with regards to PBO and DOCP turned on, should have no problems there. When you start talking about more than eight cores, 16 threads, then that's where you could potentially run into some problems and I don't think it would be good pairing those particular CPUs with this particular board. Something like a 14 plus two plus one power delivery would allow you to get a little more out of those CPUs and in all honesty, if you're pairing a five, 600 pounds CPU with a sub 200 pound motherboard, it may not be the best fit either. We have also got an eight layered PCB, additional durability. On the back, we've got some nice trace layouts. Can't see any particular issues or problems. And it looks really, really well made. In fact, it looks quite tough. Next up is our AM5 socket. We open up our retention arm, give you a quick look at the socket itself, reveals all of our pins. Just remember, AM4 CPUs do not fit in here. It will end in disaster. So as we return that, close down our retention arm, it brings us onto our four RAM slots. Great news for people that want large capacities. This can actually house up to 256 gigabytes at up to 8,000 mega transfers per second. Everyone's so focused on speed nowadays. One of the benefits of B850, which we mentioned before, is the Gen 5 support. More importantly, on this top M.2 slot here, we have Gen 5 by four lanes. We've also got our PCIe Time 16 slot, which is also Gen 5 as well. Another neat little feature which I really like, guys, and it saves a lot of scrape in the back of your graphics cards trying to get them out of the slots, is this quick release that Asus has introduced. Makes it really, really simple to install and to take out your graphics card without any damage. We've also got two additional Gen 4 NVMe slots. And a lot of people ask me, what happens if I put a Gen 5 in this one, a Gen 4 in this one, and a Gen 4 in this one? Well, it's really important, guys, that you understand that if you populate this second slot here and this third slot here, our Gen 4 times 16 PCI slot down the bottom will not work at all. If you just want a Gen 5 drive in here and a Gen 4 drive in here, then leave this one empty. This time 16 slot will work. Last thing to note down here, we've got two additional PCIe slots. We've got a Gen 4x1, and we've also got a Gen 4 times 16 But as we said, if you're occupying this NVMe slot here, this will not work. I love the interaction of these toolless installs as well. So you can literally slide in an M.2, swing that around, and that will hold it nicely in place. And then you saw in the actual box itself, we also add a standoff and a screw to hold in our M.2 underscore three slot to hold that one in place. 
Please also note that our second and third slot do not come with a shield. We've got a nice little stay tough heat sink over our chipset as well. And I'll take you for a little guide around the actual board itself, guys, point out some of the main connections. So we have our all-in-one pump. So that means that if you've got a water pump and you want it on 100% speed all the time, to connect to this one. We have our CPU optional header, and then we've got our CPU fan header. So if you're using a towel cooler or an all-in-one and you want to control the fans, it's on this one here, second one down. We then have two three-pin, five volt addressable RGB connections. So if you want to plug in any hubs, you want to control any fans and you want the motherboard software to control that RGB, you can plug onto one of these two or we do also have a Gen 2 header down here as well. So you've got three five volt headers to control all the RGB you will ever need. Coming further down, we have our 24 pin standard power connector for our motherboard itself. We have our USB type C connector, and this is a 20 gigabyte port, guys. Really important to know that, given the fact that our USB port on the back type C is only a 10 gigabit output port. So if your case actually supports it, you can actually get 20 gigabits per second via the internal connector here, but only 10 gigabits via the USB type C, which is there. We then have our USB 3 connector. That's gonna connect most of our blue ports on our cases. We've then got two additional SATA connectors down there. Moving across the bottom, we have our JFP1, so our power, our reset, and hard drive LED buttons. Just go onto this little uh, connector down here. We've got then two additional SATA connections, so four in total. We've then got Two additional USB 2 connectors, comes in perfect for fan hubs or sometimes LCD screens that need to be controlled on our all-in-ones. We've then got three chassis fan headers. And last but not least, we've got our front panel audio connector down here. So in a normal build, guys, you'll have your front panel audio, you'd have a USB 2 connector, you'd have your JFP1 on this one, you connect your USB 3 here, your USB-C here, your 24 pin, maybe an RGB three pin addressable connector, your CPU fan connection, and then we would have our eight plus four or eight plus eight pin for our CPU power. On the back, a nice little touch here is the fact that we do have a BIOS flashback. We've got plenty of USB connectivity as well, including our 10 gigabit USB type C, as well as 10 gigabit type A. We also have our two and a half gig LAN connection, along with our Realtek 7.1 audio, and again, our Wi-Fi 6E. What I'm talking about in terms of that easy connect, guys, you literally can just push them on, as simple as that, no more of that screwing it left, right, and center, you can't get your fingers in, and so on and so forth. They clip on and then pull off, really, really simple. So we've talked a lot about the pros on this particular board, but what are the negatives? And I think it's really important to point out, some of these negatives may not be negatives for everybody, but I wanted to share them with you. So as I've already said to you, this board, even though it's a B850 E board, it does only have Wi-Fi 6E. Most people would prefer to connect via LAN with the two and a half gigabit connection, but if Wi-Fi 7 is a killer for you, then this board may not be for you. The other thing to point out is it only has a 20 gigabit per second USB type C internal connector here, no output on the back. Again, if you're looking for a 40 gigabit per second USB 4, then that may not be something for you. The last thing to point out is the power delivery. We've already mentioned it's eight plus two plus one, gonna be absolutely fine for around 95% of people. But if you've got something like a 16 core or 32 threaded CPU, costs around five, 600 pounds, me personally, I wouldn't pair that particular CPU with this board just so that I got the absolute best performance. I would be looking for something like an X870 or an X870E board where I can push it to its extreme limits, provide some overclocking and so on and so forth. On to the important bit, the brass tax. And here in the UK, this retails at around 
and in the US that would be around 210 to 220 dollars. I think that is really good value to performance in all honesty. Yes, we're not getting that Wi-Fi 7 or USB 4, uh, 40 gigabits per second, but we've got everything that we need, generally speaking, at a fairly good price. 170 quid here in the UK, I don't think that's too bad at all. If you are somebody that is looking for Wi-Fi 7, that USB 4, more connectivity, etc., etc., well, the good news is that Asus Tough, I've got the Plus version, so the B850-E Plus Wi-Fi. That comes in at around about £30 extra here in the UK and about $50 in the US. That does give you Wi-Fi 7 and that 20 gigabit port on the actual back here. So that eliminates those two potential issues. So in all honesty, if this fits and ticks all of your boxes, I wouldn't have any problems recommending this particular board. And if truth be told guys, I'm actually gonna be utilizing this with a 9800X 3D and an RTX 5070 Ti in an upcoming build in the next couple of weeks. I'm actually gonna be building it with a very young man, a really young subscriber, and it's his very, very first PC. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, leave a comment below and tell me why. Get subscribed not to miss out. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.